is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. Hallelujah. That is who he is. We praise God, hallelujah, for being in the house of the Lord one more time. We missed y'all last week, but glory be to God. I thank and praise God that we're here under the tent. Hallelujah to God. And we give God the praise. Hallelujah. We bring you greetings once again from Community Refuge Church here in Manalapin, New Jersey, under a leadership of our pastor, Apostle Fred Rubin, and First Lady Teresa Rubin, and our assistant pastor, Elder Barry Williams, and all the elders, all the ministers. All the deacons welcome you here once again on Zoom, on Facebook, to give God the praise for what he is doing in our lives. Hallelujah to God. We're going to glorify him. We're going to magnify him. We're going to uplift him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just a brief testimony. You know, when, when, when the enemy blocks the road, God always makes a way of escape. Hallelujah. We thank you, praise God, that we, we had some trouble this morning. <laughs> they shut down some roads out in this morning. Then we got on Route 287. We got on 287. Then there's a bunch of fools out there this morning, cutting in and out. There was about three, three Corvettes that were cutting in and out. I almost cut one. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God, who has given us traveling mercies to be here. I told my wife, I said, you know, it's got to be a blessing here today. If the enemy was trying to stop us from getting here, God, hallelujah, has to have a blessing today. Hallelujah to God. So I'm going to encourage you today, even if there's a roadblock, even if it seems like something is not going right in your life, hallelujah, God always makes a way of escape. He always makes hallelujah, a, a ram in the bush, hallelujah. There's always an out glory to God under the leadership of God. If you just trust him, oh, y'all ain't saying me. If you just trust him, believe him, hallelujah, there's always a way out. And God is great. And he never failed me, and I, never, and I believe he never will. Glory to God, hallelujah. Holly, but I thank and praise God for being here. We thank and praise God, Holly, for seeing all those in the parking lot this morning. Hallelujah. Can I get the parking lot this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So I always say we're going to get this party started. Hallelujah. I'm looking for God to bless. Hallelujah. Not only the praise team, bless the word of God today in the name of Jesus. We invited him in here today to have his place. Oh God, we invite him right now in the name of Jesus. So we're going to go into prayer. Hallelujah. Then we're going to go directly into praise and worship. So we're going to receive our deacon Fitzpatrick. He is going to lead us in prayer. And then he's going to take us further into praise and worship in Jesus. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. I love you, I love you, I love you all today.
I am a testimony. 20 years cancer free. Now, I have to share what the doctor told me, and this is why I say you must trust in God because God has a final say. The doctors told me back in 2000 that I had about a year max, one to three years, three years was max. At stage three, inflammatory breast cancer, which was a very aggressive form of cancer. And they told me one to three years was my max. And I stand here today. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, God is good. I stand here today, 20 years later, cancer free. So those of you that are struggling, that they struggle, I'm here to tell you, God is good. He is a miracle worker. He is a way maker. He can make it happen. And are you trusting him? Trust. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. So again, I can stand here as an encouragement to any of you that are battling cancer, whether it be breast cancer or any form of cancer. God can God can heal you. He is He is a way maker. He's a healer. He's a miracle worker. Praise his name. So with that, I, I had to share that because my hubby was, was sharing, but I just wanted to be an encouragement to any of you that are currently struggling with any type of cancer that God will help you and bring you through. 20 years. 20 years. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to come with the song. Thank you. I'm going to come with the song. You know. <laughs> But I did say, thank you, Lord. Okay, now I can do announcements. <laughs> oh, praise his name. Okay, all week, all week, Bishop will be continuing his morning reflections on Facebook Live, morning reflections on Facebook Live at noon each day, Monday through Friday. Amen. Tuesday, Tuesday evening, we will continue our, our fellowship at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening. Bishop will continue part three of uh, prayer, part three of um, various ways of prayer. That's 7 p.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live, Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Wednesday morning, we will continue our morning prayer at 6.30 a.m. on our conference line. 6.30 a.m. is morning prayer, Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Now, this Friday, this Friday um, and, and Saturday, October 22nd through 23rd, is the 70th International Women's Council. And um, that will be held on Facebook and Zoom. And you will need to register on watch.cooljc.org. That's watch.cooljc.org um, to take part and uh, attend or participate in this uh, council meeting. And the event is, the topic is even now, even now, engage, empower, and equip. God can do it. So mark your calendars, uh, ladies, Friday, this Friday, the 22nd, as well as Saturday, the 23rd. Uh, more information, again, will be on that watch.cooljc.org. Amen. Sunday, Sunday, we will continue our usual schedule. We are back to educational uh, education hour, um, and that will be at 10.30, 10.30 next Sunday. Our instructor is Elder Samuel Bullock. Elder Samuel Bullock will be our instructor. So join us next Sunday on Zoom uh, at 10.30 for education hour. And we will continue then with our morning service at 11.30 on Zoom and Facebook Live. Amen, amen. Um, later this month, at 10.30, sorry, October 30th, October 30th is the Northeast Pre-Congress Rally, Northeast Pre-Congress Rally. Um, and that will be held, at, it's, I believe it's in Connecticut. I can't, at Connecticut, I don't, I'm not able to see the, <laughs> Sorry, the address, but it will be posted on our Facebook page. So the Northeast Pre-Congress Rally is October 30th, 
There's panel discussions between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m., panel discussions 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., and then there's an evening service at 5, 5 p.m. Again, that's October 30th. Um, the flyer will be posted on our Facebook page to so get more details about that. Amen. We are a church that believes in prayer. The power, wonder-working power of prayer. Let's continue to keep each other pleased in prayer as we lift up those special prayer requests for health. Uh, Brother Kevin Warner, Brother Thomas Bodie, Rita Cook, Sister Melissa Rennie, Denisha Ingram, Sister Meredith Crawford, Elder Garner. I apologize for not seeing that well too. See, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Seaborn, Seaborn Cook, uh, Brother George Height. And Rita Rainwright, Wainwright, sorry, and uh, Jimmy Bullock Sr. for health, for bereavement, uh, Mother Devereaux and family, for the passing of our sister Suzette Pickett, the, the Burke family, thank you, uh, the Bullock family, the Gardner family, and the Keese family. Generally, for our first responders, our church mothers, community refuge, and our country. And special announcement on the um, funeral services for our sisters to get picket. That will be held here this Tuesday, October 19th. Uh, the viewing will be at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. will be the viewing, and service will be at 11 a.m. here, community refuge. That's for uh, Suzette, our sister Suzette Pickett's uh, funeral. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right, I think that covers the announcements before I ramble on. <laughs> um, we welcome up Elder Barry Williams with words of encouragement. Praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because the Lord is good the lord is good hey, in spite of everything the lord is still he is still good hallelujah i was on my way and got in a whole bunch of traffic on on route 18 due to an accident one mind says well you know you're not feeling that great so let's go and turn on around you know this is this is your cue <laughs> this is your cue. <laughs> uh, but I, my mind was forward already. My mind was already here. So I said, no, I'm not turning around. If I get there and they just sing the last song, I'm going to clap my hand and give him praise for being in the presence of the saints of God. Hallelujah. But I thank God for just being here. I thank God for his goodness. And I thank God for his mercies towards us and all the things that he has blessed us with this week. This week. Hallelujah. I thank God for just bringing me through this week. Hallelujah. I have a praise. I'm working on it. I have a praise down in my soul because God has been good to me. So as I came and I stood, I said, okay, I ain't got nothing to say. You know, I did make it, but I, I ain't got nothing to say. Well, Lord, you got to give me real something to say. Give me something to say. So as I was standing there, the Lord says, say, release everything that's in the way of your praise. Release. Let it go. Everything that is in the way of your praise. Because those things may also be in the way of your blessing. And y'all know as we was talking about the ending of this year that God is getting ready to do something. So I want to get everything out the way. Hallelujah. Get everything out the way. And you know, sometimes God will bring things to your attention. He'll bring things to your attention. Well, I, I remember... 
some time ago sitting in church and um, I was just sitting there. I was glad to be there, but something had transpired where I wasn't a part of the service. Thank you. And as I was sitting there, the Holy Ghost reminded me, just forget about it. Whatever somebody said, did, or how they yes. Yes. reacted, yes. just forget about that because this service is not for them. This service was for me. And I thought about that. If I had a birthday party and I invited y'all to my birthday party, but somebody made you angry on the way, and then you're going to come and mess up, sit looking gloomy, you can't get with the program. Hallelujah. No, that's not, that's not the way it's supposed to be because the attention is off of the right person and on the wrong person. So let us release everything. They may be burdens, they may be cares, they may be problems, they may be situations, they may be circumstances that, that has gotten so, taken so control of you that you feel like you cannot go forth in your praise. But if you can just release it from your heart, release it from your mind, and begin to bless the name of the Lord, he will meet you where you are. And not only that, but he's going to bless you, and he's going to make your path straight. Hallelujah. Well, he's going to make your path straight to your victory, straight to your blessing, straight to your promises. Hallelujah. If you can just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah. Let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it go. Hallelujah. And let God get the glory out of our lives. Sometimes we got to release ourselves out of our own way. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's just in your heart. It's, it's in your mind, you know. And we just got to overcome sometimes yourself. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Wow. You got to tell yes. yourself. Tell yourself. Hallelujah. You're going to praise it. Tell yourself, God is still able. Tell yourself, I'm in line for the victory, for the blessing, and for the promises. And watch God work in your behalf. Tell somebody. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yes, we just got to do what we got to do. It is coming in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a good day to have a good day. We thank God for this day alone. As I was sitting there before praise and worship started, the song dropped in my heart was, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, and did not think and Dwayne get up and sing if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Lord have mercy, where would I be? He said, the song says, he kept my enemies away. He turned my midnight in the day. Then he rocked me in the cradle of his love. When he knew I had been tattered and torn. If it had not been, hallelujah. For the Lord who is on my side, I thank him for being on my side. Oh, God, if I would go through the events of what happened on yesterday and today, my God, I thank God for being on my side. He's an awesome Savior. He's a wonderful God. I can't live without him. And I want to thank the Tuckers for reviewing the uh, National Cancer, Breast Cancer Month for me. And the testimony is so much better than all I got to say. I got some statistics to say, but I thank God for that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful testimony because God is yet able to do all things. And I thank him for doing just that. It says this month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, an annual campaign to raise the awareness about the impact of breast cancer. We have on that team to raise our awareness of breast cancer, to make us think of that. There's a narrative that is not for just for 
the awareness of disease, but to be aware of the people who have the disease. They say there is nearly 4 million people in the United States alone with breast cancer. And we think that this ugly disease is just for women, but men also can have breast cancer. And so we want to raise your awareness of breast cancer, but we need to start thinking about breast cancer and that they and pray that they can come up with a cure for this deadly, ugly, ugly disease. My heart goes out to everybody that have cancer because it's a dreadful, dreadful disease. And we're asking our church to pray and not just on this month to remember the pink and the, the little bow that we wear sometimes for breast cancer awareness, but that we sincerely pray that this demon will go back where it belongs, go back where it belongs. Because it can happen. It can happen if we pray. God can do anything in our praise God. Thank God again for that wonderful testimony. Bishop Ruben, if you come, please. If I don't, do you have to keep going? Okay. I like that expression. It's a good day to have a good day. I like that expression. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're just so grateful to glory to you. Honor to Lord and to all these great men and women of the Lord. It's exciting to be in the presence of God's people. Well, in the midst of the hot summer, it was hot out here. Uh, it started cooling off. And just before I got up, I saw the sun go behind the clouds. But it's a good day to have a good day. It's a good day to have a good day. And we have started our plans to move inside. We might make it through the month of October, the Lord so allows. We send an Indian summer for the first Sunday uh, for communion. That would be fantastic. But the Lord chooses differently in the weather. Uh, doesn't allow us to be outside. We'll be going into the sanctuary, but there's room for those that are in the parking lot, room for each and every one of you inside. And those of you on Zoom and Facebook, we're going to continue on Zoom and Facebook as our services go forward. And we're praying, we're certainly praying that this pandemic would be behind us, that it would be a memory, a conversation. Of course, we've been encouraging people to get vaccinated, and we're going to continue to do that. But we're looking for God to just, through the wisdom of those that he's given it to, to let this become just a memory. We're here, and we're about to share God's word. But before we do, I want to thank each and every one of you that have been so kind and your prayerful support and your financial support of this ministry. And those of you that have added your support to our annual morning reflections appeal. And of course, those are monies that we use to be a blessing for those in need going into the holiday season. And with the pandemic, it's been a year-round situation, uh, both here at home and our mission in Haiti. So those that are giving to our cash app, giving online, those that are mailing, those that are stopping by, just know, praise the Lord, if it's for the morning reflections, if it's something that you want, especially for Haiti, just mark it down and that's exactly where your funds will go. Yes, our cash app is dollar sign CR Church, and go to communityrefuge.org, our mailing address to your box 75. And suddenly the members and those that come to our services are able to give in person. And those others stop by. And uh, they let me know, Bishop, but come, I want to invest in the work. And we're simply so grateful, so grateful. I need to find somebody that needs God to do something in their life. Oh, God. 
You can't ask the Lord for a miracle. You don't need a miracle. So I'm looking around the parking lot. I'm looking at those on Zoom and those on Facebook. I'm asking, is there anybody that needs a miracle? If you hear it, just speak your horn three times. If you're on Zoom, on Facebook, just put a note. I need a miracle. Somebody kept beeping, they need two or three miracles. All right, all right, and God is able, God is able, God is able. I heard the scripture today, today that tells us to be careful for nothing but to bring all of our prayers and supplication unto the Lord and to do it with thanksgiving. And the next scripture is an important scripture because it talks about the peace of God. It passes all understanding. That's a combined, combined message from the Lord. If you bring me, if you cast your cares upon me, if you bring me your petitions, if you bring me your supplication, I will let your mind be at rest. Are you ready to be at rest? That was one of the prayers we've been teaching, the prayer of rest. So let you and I pray and release whatever it is. Put it in the hands of the Lord and let God rest sit upon you. Gracious Father, I thank you today. I praise you. I worship you. I magnify your holy and your adorable name. Let your spirit minister to us. Let your anointing be upon us. Let your grace, your mercy, your kindness overshadow us right now. And Lord, we'll thank you. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the honor. Lord, that man, that woman that's asking for a miracle, send it right now. Send it right now. Send it right now. Let thy Shekinah glory overshadow them to encourage the hearts, the minds, and the spirits. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you and give you the glory. There is one announcement I want to remind you of. Uh, on Tuesday, Sister Suzette Pickett, this is the daughter of Mother Devereaux, and the services for Sister Pickett will be on Tuesday here at the church. Now, it is a pandemic. We can host uh, a number of folks, but if you're not able to be here, it's going to be on our Zoom uh, numbers, the, the same ones that you use to Zoom uh, to witness this service. If you post it, those are the same numbers that you can use starting at about 11 o'clock. You can observe the service starting at 11 o'clock. Now, thank God for our technicians. They have made themselves available. There is a Lord that can be Zoom. Uh, some of our ushers, some of our folks, they made themselves available so we can have a true celebration of the life of Sister Pitcher. She fought a tough battle. She continued to fight, but the Lord saw fit to take her out of our struggle and that she might be with him. I'm looking today at the Gospel of John, chapter number five. Verses 1 through 9, read in this manner. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep mark of the pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay the great multitude of impotent folk. By Hulk, with it, waiting for the moving of the water. An angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water was troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming another step down before me, Jesus said unto him, 
rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked, and the same day was the Sabbath. I want to use my thought, and you can take it as a statement of prophecy into your life. Your wait is over. Your wait is over. Waiting can be quite difficult, especially when your expectation of victory becomes diminished as your waiting becomes prolonged. A short wait is one thing, but an indefinite wait. When your thoughts begin to question and they become dimmer and dimmer. I put these notes down uh, yesterday during the day, and then during the night, the Lord said, I'm going to show you exactly what you just wrote down there. It was about 10 o'clock at night, and all of a sudden, the, the lights started going on and off, on and off, and light bulbs started to blink on. We lost partial power to the house. And we first, at least I first assumed assume this was something with the storm and it hit the community. And so I just told Baby Ruben, we're just going to have to wait until it comes back on. Well, that's an indefinite time, but yet there's a thought that it shall come back on. And we waited a while and we gone to there to go to sleep, and about 12 o'clock, the thought came to me. I see lights here, I see lights there. Maybe it's not a neighborhood thing. And so I went outside to see if I could see maybe a branch that knocked something off. And I saw that the wire leading to our house had fallen quite low. And as I examined it, I saw that part of it had been broken off from the pole that gave it its power. Came back in and found the number to the uh, JCP and L electric company and called them. And they said, we're going to have it fixed by 2.30. Then the wait became less hectic. I said, well, we can wait two hours and a half power. Come on. And then we woke up this morning and recognized that the internet service was down. Praise the Lord, and we called them, and uh, the more they tried to do, the worse it got. Praise the Lord, they had internet, lost that. They had some TV, lost that. Then they started talking about when they'd be able to come and see about it. And here we go back into waiting. And the first time they told me, I told them, no, that's not going to work. I have a, a commitment in, in my role as pastor. And he said, well, you're going to have to just wait some more. Waiting is challenging. Waiting is challenging. Waiting is And by the way, they did set another appointment for tomorrow afternoon. But Lady Ruben, you just have to be pleased waiting with me. And I'll keep talking to you. And you talk to me. And you won't worry about the television or anything else. But waiting can be chilling. And what happens while we're waiting is that we tend to write the script describing when victory is coming, if victory is going to come, or we're going to have to just forget about victory. The intensity of our problem, of course, adds to our situation. If it's a small thing, we can learn how to deal with it. If it's something that's important to us, it becomes more challenging to wait. The other thing that impacts us, besides the time, besides the intensity, are the thoughts of others. I've told you many times I don't like to be around negative people. I don't like to be around folks that are going to tell me it's not going to happen. I don't like to be around folks that are going to tell me God is not going to be blessed. Praise the Lord, I want to leave those folks alone and be around somebody that knows how to tell me God can do all things. 
I find anybody in the house that knows how to say that. God can do all things. Able to bless, able to provide, able to work out any situation. There are souls of the kind of folks I want to be around. Well, this incident is about a man that went as an impotent man to the pool. And when you look at the word Bethesda, it talks about being a house of mercy. Went to a place where you could get something that you didn't deserve. You can get something that you didn't earn. But God knows how to bless. God knows how to provide. God knows how to do for us. He went to the pool knowing that at a certain time during the year, an angel came and troubled the water. And the first one that got in the water was made whole of whatever situation it was. When the man first started going, we can ascertain that he went with assurance, went with confidence. I'm going to get in that water and God is going to bless me. I'm going to be made whole. I'm going to shout the victim. I'm going to praise him. And he went with that kind of confidence. Someone like when you and I pray, and we sense the, the Spirit of God telling us, I got this thing taken care of. We, we sense God saying to us, it's going to be all right. Can I find the witness? Anybody been in that kind of prayer meeting? You can feel God assuring you, victory is coming, victory is coming, victory is coming. When you get so excited that you begin to praise God even before it comes. You get so excited, you begin to tell the Lord, I thank you, I praise you, I worship, and you tell others the God I serve is able to do all things. The God I serve is able to fix anything and all things. Yes, we heard a beautiful testimony how God spoke to the doctors and told the doctors, you don't know what I can do. You say it can't be done. You're, you're putting a time in, but I'm God. And I know how to heal. I know how to bless. I know how to make a way. But as the man stayed there, one year turned into two years. Two years into three, three into four, four into five. And somewhere along the line, this man stopped looking to be healed. Went there simply just to be there. Many folks get into prayer lines not looking for miracles. Many folks go to prayer meetings not looking and believing that God is going to do anything. They just keep going through the, the motion, keep going through the motion, keep going through the motion. But when I pray, I'm looking for a miracle. Every time I say to the Lord, I need something, I'm looking for God to, to work something out. If he wants to tell me something different, he knows how to do that. But somehow the man gave up hope. Now, not to be 38 years. We've been teaching about different prayers. The prayer of rest, the prayer of meditation. And part of our teaching has been to place ourselves into the position of the scripture. If you're going to understand the scripture, put yourself in the midst. Last night as I was sitting there in the dark, I put myself into this man's position. I've been waiting for 38 years and nothing has happened. I've been waiting as a lame person for 38 years. And all I see is other folks that are also waiting. All I see is a host of folks that have not been here, that have not been blessed. They keep telling me that nothing is going to change. I try to, to feel his pain. Never to feel the, the frustration. Never to feel that which this man felt. As he was feeling these things, here comes Jesus. I ought to repeat that. Here comes Jesus. Can you say that with me? Here comes Jesus. Now, as I put myself into his position, I realized why he responded to Jesus the way he did. Jesus came and 
asked the man, do you want to be made whole? His response was based on 38 years of disappointment, of frustration. 38 years of not being able to get to the water. And he said that to the Lord. But every time the angel comes in trouble, the Lord, I, I try to get myself to the water. But I can't do it. He also said one thing that caught my attention. There's no man to help me. Nobody to help me get to the water. Nobody to get me to the place that I need to be asked to be blessed. Nobody can get me to that troubled water. Now, Jesus didn't say it, but he implied it. You're looking in the wrong direction. You're looking for man to do what man cannot do. You're looking for man to resolve an issue that man doesn't have the power. But this is Jesus talking. Jesus said to the man, do you want to be made whole? The man kept pushing back, pushing back. I've been waiting this long, but it's never going to end. That's when Jesus looked at him. He didn't try to convince him, but he commanded him. One of the prayers that we'll get to is the prayer of authority. But Jesus always spoke with authority. And told that man to take up his bed, to rise, to take up his bed, and start walking. Something about when God speaks to you. It's not like a man or a woman speaking to you. When God speaks to his power, his authority, you can feel something. You can grasp something. You can understand something. The Bible says, as the Lord told him to rise up, this impotent man got up. He picked up his bed and started walking around. Showing everybody, look and see what God has done for me. And I'm sure there was a thank you, Jesus. I'm sure there was a hallelujah. I'm sure there was a Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. But the fact is, God is trying to tell somebody, I know you've been waiting for a long time. I know you've given up hope. I know you've given up expectation. I know you no longer see the fact that I can do it. But the Lord's walking around looking at folks in their cars today, looking at folks on Zoom and Facebook, and he's asking you this question. Do you want me to fix it for you? Do you want me to change your situation? And you better not try to tell God why I can't do it. Because the Lord came with a victory statement. The Lord came to tell somebody, get up from your doubt. Get up from your disappointment and pick up any situation and start showing everybody God is able. The God I serve can make anything happen. Can I find a witness in the house? Can I find somebody to take that which you've been waiting for and thought it never happened and just get up off of your doubt and fear and start testifying, my wait is over. God has spoken victory into my spirit. Somebody give him a praise right now and tell him thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I know you've been waiting. I want those that have been waiting just to beat the horn one time. Been waiting, been waiting. And your faith has become diminished. Your doubts have overcome your faith. You put a time limit on God. You put an ability limit on God. And you listen more to those that were talking about what God could do than when God said, I'm able to bless you. When God talks to you, when you're in that prayer meeting, when you're just contemplating your situation, and God's spirit begins to speak to you, I've heard your cry, I'm sending victory. I heard your petition, 
and your wait is over. When God speaks that, you got to act like you know God is able. There's something about faith that lets you walk before even the manifestation. There's something about faith that lets you say to Jesus Christ, I thank you for the victory. I thank you for what you've already done in my life. The fact that can't nobody else see it. The fact that I can't explain it to everybody doesn't matter a, a bit, doesn't matter anything. Because Lord, you told me I'm healed and I'm claiming healing right now. Can I find anybody else that's going to claim healing, going to claim salvation, going to claim deliverance? And that I got enough faith to claim it for somebody else. I've got names running through my mind. And I'm saying, Lord, I thank you for their salvation. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for their transformation. And I want somebody to join with me right now and think about what God's going to do and start praising him, start thanking him, start magnifying. Yes, somebody give God the praise. Hallelujah. This man waited. But the Lord came to tell him, your weight is over. Don't point at anybody else. Point at yourself right now. Put your hands lightly on yourself. And claim the fact that my weight is over. And I do feel God speaking with you. You feel God ministering to you. I want you to begin to praise Him and to worship Him and to testify about His goodness. There's some things I've been waiting for a long time. And the enemy has tried to tell me it's never going to happen. But He's a liar. He's the father of all liars. And I'm standing here right now claiming victory and declaring our wait is over. Said last week we have to learn how to cry with a broken heart and contrite spirit. And we started that letting the tears come. Throughout this week, we're going to continue. And starting the following Monday, for that week, we're going to consecrate and spend time in prayer and fasting before the Lord. Looking for Jesus Christ to tell somebody your wait is over. I've got enough faith to claim it right now. Yes, I'm thinking about those names that are stumbling. But healing's coming their way. Salvation's coming their way. Deliverance is coming their way. Are you ready to pray with me? Are you ready to let God remind you? I told you. I'm going to fix you over here. I told you that your miracle is coming. Now I hear him saying again, your wait is over. Gracious Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you. In the midst of our waiting, the enemy wanted us to give up. In the midst of our waiting, doubts tried to mount up. In the midst of our waiting, we became confused and uncertain. But Lord, I thank you right now for your speaking. 
to us. You're speaking into our spirit. You're speaking into our thoughts. You're speaking into our being. Our wait is over. Victory is here. Oh, Lord, I thank you this day. And I praise you this day. As the praise team gives us a selection, I want you to put yourself in the hands of that man. But not just the doubting. Not just the rejection. But when the Lord told him to rise up. Pick up his bed and walk. I want you to see yourself doing the same thing. Pick up whatever it is that you've been waiting for that seems to be holding you back. Lift it up. And begin thanking. Begin praise. Yes, praise you. Come on. I remember as the song was being sung, you see yourself picking up your doubt, lifting it up, walking in faith. We're going to walk around and greet everybody, and Elder Tuck is going to come and give us our benediction as the faith in Jesus is song.
Thank you. 